There are many albums that have stood the test of time because the artists that made them put their life into making them. Heart, soul, patience, personal experience, and a lot of musical ability. There are other albums that were made from a marketing formula. You know, the ones that were made as quickly as possible to make the most amount of profit with the least amount of effort. And somehow, the latter makes way more money and sells a lot more copies than the prior. And it's when mediocrity like that shines and is successful that we should be regretting the past. On the last episode, I spoke about the early 2000s and the three bands that made the Triforce of Suckage in Lid Biscuit, Nickelback, and Creed. While rock was changing and new bands were sprouting up in this time period, the mainstream kept promoting these three bands. It's ironic now because Limp Bizkit and Creed are somewhat of rock pariahs on the radio, and Nickelback is only played on pop stations to show they have quote variety on their station, and on some sucky rock stations across the US to be fair. But after so many requests to continue regretting the past, it only makes sense to focus on another piece of the Suckage Squad and look at everyone's favorite Canadian punching bags, Nickelback. Never made it as a wise man. I couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing. Yeah, you're not cutting it as a lyric writer either, so you need to knock it off. Ah, Nickelback. At one time, you seemed like an upcoming rock band from Canada who had the basics down and nothing but potential for the future. Then everyone started to realize just what they were listening to. A marketing and scientific formula, much like many Beyonce and One Direction songs that are now made. These songs are created to be catchy and sell. That leads us to the issue at hand, Silver Side Up. Nickelback's third album was released on... No. Wikipedia. <laughs> Somebody got me good. Alright. Come on, Google. When did this album come out? No. Okay, I'm not making any jokes about this. It was just a bad coincidence. Albums get released on Tuesdays, and that's just what happened on 9-11. So, a Nickelback album came out on September 11th. There's no way they could have known. I'm not going to make any jokes about this, so let's... Let's just move on really quickly to the songs on the album, and then let's go from there and never talk about this again. Silver Side Up, the third album from Nickelback, came after the second album, The State, which may come as a shock, actually isn't bad. Yes, I really said that. After The State, however, came a new idea. Not so much how to make an album filled with passion and everything you've got, but rather taking the research and business aspect and trying to make an album that would sell. Silver Side Up is an example of a band trying to reach the masses by playing what people already like. If you don't believe me, then hear Mr. Kroger's words. Studying every piece, everything sonically, everything lyrically, everything musically, chord structure, I would dissect every single song I would hear on the radio or every song that had ever done well on a chart, and I would say, why did this do well? That's the problem I have with Nickelback, and especially Silver Side Up. It wasn't written or performed for the art and for the love of music, it was made to make a profit. Say you have a barbecue sauce and you start cutting corners just to save money on ingredients, but still advertise that it's just as good as any other sauce. That doesn't make you any better, that just makes you cheap and look like a jerk for selling it and claiming it's as good as anything else. But unfortunately, people will buy it if you advertise it right. More on that later because I don't want to go on too much of a tangent now, but just like last time in Regretting the Past, I'm going to listen from beginning to end to this album. Heaven help me. Oh my gosh, just from those opening notes and that static, I can tell this is going to be a long one. As far as a rhythm and energy go in an opening song, Never Again actually does a great job. It starts the volume loud and wakes you up. The drums specifically carry a good rhythm, but what's interesting though is the lyrics. This is a dark topic to open an album with. Whether or not this is a personal experience for the band members or something, this album starts on a very low and sad story about domestic abuse in a family. I'm not saying that this isn't something that shouldn't be discussed, but it's intense that the album starts on this note. Whether you like Nickelback or not, and I know it's fun to laugh at them, this is a serious topic to open up your 10-track album with. Domestic abuse on a mother and child is not something that's easily forgettable. 
Nickelback really went for it and gave a full description of what's going on in those lyrics, but it leaves a bad taste in your mouth when you start off an album like this. Speaking of bad taste, here's more Nickelback! Never made it as a wise man I couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing Tired of living like a blind man I'm sick of sight without a sense of feeling And this is how you remind me This song was played everywhere. It was even played in decent rotation on MTV at a time where rock really wasn't showcased. Radio, television, even mall overhead speakers played this song during the day. It's very generic, but not bad at all. It has a very standard format and ease to follow along to. It was written originally about the lead singer's ex-girlfriend. There is a reason it sold so well and charted like crazy, though. It was made to copy other songs' generic formats. This was a formulaic single promoted to get attention and copy what was already successful. It was even said by Kroger that How You Remind Me sold so well because it was about a romantic relationships, a universal subject, and contained memorable hooks. That is awful. This song was not written for cathartic purposes. It was made to get noticed by the work of other people and their talent in their songs. They just wanted to get noticed. They wanted to sell albums right off the bat. And somehow, it worked perfectly. How You Remind Me was one of the last rock singles to ever be number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Only Coldplay would claim that title seven years later. Nielsen ratings proved that it was the number one most played song on US radio between 2001 and 2009. And if that's not crazy enough to wrap your head around, this album, led by a formulaic rock single, sold over 6 million copies in the United States alone, and it was one of the top 100 selling albums in that decade. We all fell for it. I remember having friends in high school that had this album and would never listen past the first couple tracks because there was no real reason to, and I see that now. There's no real substance past the first two songs on this whole album, and that's what bothers me, because after the two songs, it gets worse. So whatever you've just heard so far, those are the highlights. While this song isn't terrible, it feels very bland. It's generic rock filler. Not even worth playing or bringing up at a live show where Nickelback is the headliner. It's forgettable. And I think that is the problem with music like this. So much of the passionless filler songs not only waste time, but are forgettable. Completely. Really listen to Woke Up This Morning, and then ask yourself if you ever see yourself listening to this song again. It offers nothing. Ironically though, there is one Nickelback song that really helps me get up in the morning. <laughs> no! No! Okay. Okay. I'm up. Too Bad was one of the three singles to be played heavily on rock radio and get a music video. The vocals don't sound awful and it's a slower song and that's fine, but this is broody and melodramatic. The writing is purple prose garbage that drones on and on. The music video highlights these broken hearted people. It's just more quote, dark lyrics to make you think, but in reality it just feels like basic high school angst with a big budget. These songs are getting more and more generic with the music, and surprisingly more and more depressing and whinier with the lyrics. I mean, these are getting sad. I know we're done with the radio singles, but there has to be at least one gem on this album, right? How did this sell six million copies? Just Four is another typical heartbreak and vengeance song. It's interesting to listen to because you can tell the guitarist and drummer do know how to play, but when listening you can't help but feel like this was just an easy day at the studio for another song they won't really have to play in the future. No one is going to be interested so just fill in the track slot with another relationship topic. Hey, that's what people buy so why not? 
I swear it was like a bunch of board executives in Toronto got together and figured out how to exploit a part of the music business. The ones who haven't listened to rock since the late 60s but still claim to know how to make a profit. And unfortunately, they succeeded. Ugh, that synthesized backing vocal and just everything about Hollywood has no value. Earlier when I said I never heard my friends play the later tracks on this album, I think I understand why now. There really isn't any substance after track two. Every band is going to have an album where a few tracks feel out of place. But with Silver Side Up, it feels like they put a bunch of songs around two singles and shipped it out as fast as they could. It just feels like filler and waste. People paid $10 for this when it came out. Now, they're just being used as coasters. I don't know of one person that still consistently listens to this album from Nickelback. so boring. It's so bland. It's blander than bland. It's more generic than generic. There are instrumental free use songs on YouTube with more substance than this. I can't believe more than one person helped write this album, let alone produce it. I mean, this is like one of those bad bar bands where you walk into the front door, see a bunch of dads playing in the backstage, you hear them play songs like this, then you immediately turn around and walk out and never come there again. Okay, I was talking a little about this before with the writing and how you sing about universal subjects so that everyone can relate to them, but these are some pretty dark lyrics with some sad undertones. I mean, they are really depressing and low. Some of these are so emo they could be on a My Chemical Romance t-shirt. I mean, really, just listen to some of these lyrics taken out of line and out of the song. This time, I'm mistaken for handing you a heart worth breaking. But you weren't there, right when I needed you the most. I've been a loser all my life. I'm not about to change. I still hear him screaming, where do I hide? And he asks, and I say, hurry inside. My hopes just fell, and I can't see the reason why. WHY THERE IS BLOOD ON MY SLEEVE! Is Nickelback an emo band? Cause it kinda sounds like it from that. But you know what? Maybe I'm listening to this music the wrong way. Some of these lyrics are a little depressing and slow, and there's a certain ways you should listen to music, and the mood for me just sitting here doing that isn't right. So if you're gonna excuse me, I'm gonna go listen to these lyrics and Nickelback the way it was probably meant for me to listen to. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't help at all. Moving on. Hey, at least you admit it. This song is another generic filler track. It's terrible to critique it that way and claim that over half of an album is nothing but wasted space to fill up time, but that's really how all this feels. I'm really hoping Silver Side Up can end on a strong note. Silver Side Up did not end on a strong note. It ended on an extremely long, drawn-out, twangy note. 
over five minutes of guitar tricks and twang, all behind the same bad storytelling. But I think that is one reason why Nickelback isn't taken seriously. The writing is bad at storytelling. The music could be something, but it needs work, but even the best instruments couldn't save a lot of this material. It's overly generic structure without any substance. In the beginning of this video, I talked about when mediocrity sells that we should regret the past. Think of it this way, if you were a fast food chain and people complain about you not having enough variety, but you were still making a ton of profit from selling the same crappy burgers, then why would you care? The money speaks for itself. This applies to Nickelback. Why should they care what critics and other musicians say about their music when they know it will be successful and they will make a fortune out of casual writing, bad storytelling, and lazy guitar tracks with no real effort? We shouldn't support things like that, but for some reason, we have and still do. Everybody likes something, and there's something for everyone. So if you like Nickelback, support them, buy their music, and go to their concerts. Silver Side Up is by no means the worst album I've ever heard. It's not even the worst Nickelback album by far. But there are albums like this that are killing rock today. Because of the albums in the past that are mediocre and so successful, that kills the future generations by showing them they don't have to try as hard to be millionaires. That's what's the worst thing about this. Mediocrity succeeds while creativity and real passion becomes polarizing and people are afraid to do it anymore. If you want rock to do better, buy music you love, but also go to concerts. Buy a t-shirt at a show. Things like that help artists out more than you will ever understand and totally make a band's night. And with that, I leave one final warning. In 20 years from now, if mediocrity is still so successful, generations will get worse and something bad is going to happen. These two Canadian award-winning musicians will have an offspring. That offspring will become a musician with a fortune to produce his or her own music. And it will be played everywhere. If mediocre music is still prevalent, then that is what the future rock abomination will produce. Something far worse than what the two predecessors have made. So shun mediocrity. Support good music. It's out there. I promise. And regretting the past isn't always about the worst albums ever. It's about the albums we should regret having paid for in the first place. Hello everyone, thank you so much for checking out Regretting the Past and Rocks. The response and overwhelming support for Regretting the Past and to do more was overwhelming. I will continue to keep doing them now. I don't know if I can do them every month, but they will be a part of the rotation. Please subscribe, like, comment on this video, and check out in the annotation the link for the last Regretting the Past on Lint Biscuits, Chocolate Hot Dog Star. Oh, I can't even say that stupid album again. Ugh. <sighs>